in the beginning God made the land sea then he made a man and woman just like you and me and I'm sure they had their problems but much like you and I have seen but honey don't you worry cause the only thing that means is there's a serpent in the garden with bringing our ear trying to keep us from walking down the only path that's clear he tries his best to fool us and fill our love with doubt but the serpent in the garden doesn't know what love's about We have forgiveness But it's just one of many tools To help us make it through the hard times And that's just what we'll do But keep in mind that sometimes We're gonna have to choose Between working for the master or listening to a fool there's a serpent in the garden whispering in our ear trying to keep us from walking down the only path that's clear he tries his best to fool us and fill our love with doubt but the serpent in the garden doesn't know what love's about he tries his best to fool us and fill our love with doubt but the serpent in the garden doesn't know what love's about Amen. Beautiful. Praise God. Wow, it's good to be back to normal church, isn't it? We're having church today, aren't we? Yeah, having church. And I, I don't know if you've noticed, but I got my family right over here. We're taking the clock off the wall today. Got them, and we'll be doing some preaching. <laughs> uh, Greg, boy, what a blessing Greg is. Uh, this is his ministry, and you can tell God has, has given him a gift here. Greg uh, comes to us, and we're so thankful. You're just part of the family, Greg, and uh, we really appreciate, appreciate your ministry. And I appreciate his song there. You know, we're talking about marriages this quarter. Do you know that there's a serpent, that there's an enemy that wants to destroy your relationship with your spouse? In any relationship, as far as that goes. Today, you know, we're, we're talking about marriages, but, but really, we're talking about relationships in general. And we've already allowed the Bible to paint a picture, a beautiful picture, of how, how God introduces marriage. And marriage was God's first idea Mary, God performed the very first wedding. We're going to look at a scripture here in, in a little bit about that. All in preparation to prepare us to spend eternity with Him. It all, it's all about His marriage relationship to us. You know, when we get baptized, you know, we, we marry Jesus is what we're doing here. So marriage teaches us a lot of things, right? It teaches us how to not to be selfish. You know, by our very nature, we are selfish. We are self-centered, aren't we? We're just that kind of people. So today we're going to look at a topic here, how to keep the love fire burning. You know, uh, falling in love, falling in love is, is uh, easy, right? It's just staying in love. That's the hard part. Yeah. Do you, do you know right now over 50% over of the people that get married, they end up divorcing? That's terrible. You think that's God's plan? It's not God's plan. It's not God's plan. He wants to keep the fires burning. 
He wants you to stay married. In fact, we, we talked about this before. Let's go back there to get some scriptural reference to Genesis 2.24. Genesis 2.24 tells us God's plan. It says, Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. That's marriage, right? That's marriage. And, and they shall become one flesh. So we, so we know that it's God's plan because he tells us so in the Bible that, that he wants to keep the home fire burning. He not only wants you to fall in love, but he wants you to stay in love with each other. That's part of God's plans. Now, now is it easy? Now, did, did, did God say that it was going to be easy to keep the, the love fire burning? Anybody that's been married over five years, raise your hand. Is it easy to stay in love? No, no, it's kind of hard sometimes. It, it, it's, kind of, it's kind of hard sometimes. So I think the first thing that we need to understand here about, about this love relationship that God wants us to have is love is much, much, much more than just a feeling. Now, th the thing I want you to know today, and I'll prove from Scripture today, that love is a choice. Right? Love is a choice. God commands us to love each other. Now, He don't command us to, to feel the feeling, because love can't be a feeling, because He can't command you to feel your feeling. No, he, the commandment is love, and then He gives you the power to do it. Everything that God tells us in the Bible, everything, every commandment that God gives us in the Bible, the, the very power to fulfill that commandment is found in the promise itself. So when God tells you to love each other and keep loving each other, God is going to give you the power to do that. So uh, now it might start with a feeling. I remember the first time I met Cindy, I mean, my heart was, was trying to bounce out of, my, out of my shirt. I was so madly uh, in love with her. But, but after, after that, after that, you know, it was, more, it, was, it was more of a choice. Now, Cindy, Cindy had to choose to love me. Because I was not always lovable, right? <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> I know it's hard for you to believe. <laughs> but, but believe it or not, I was not always lovable. And so she had to choose to love me. She had to choose to love me. And as she made that choice to love me, now she would tell you it's the best choice she ever made in her whole life, wouldn't you, honey? <laughs> uh, do, do you, we didn't rehearse that either. <laughs> Uh, no, and, and you know why? Because she's got me trained. <laughs> it took a while. It took a while. But, but she has got me trained now. That's right. Uh, uh, she, in every argument, every argument, she always gets the last word. I mean, no, no. I get the last word. She gets her way, but I get the last word. I say, yes, ma'am. <laughs> I say, yes, ma'am, to her. So... It's God's plan that we keep the love fire going. In fact, we were made for each other. We were made for each other. That's the way we were designed. Uh, a man and a woman, a husband and wife. Genesis 2.21, still back there in the first marriage. Genesis 2.21 2, and 22. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall over Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in his place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. Now, I want you to notice something here, really important. Notice something. God created both man and woman in such a way that they are not complete without each other. You notice that in the scripture right here? Eve was made from Adam's rib. Where? From Adam's rib. Taken from Adam's rib here to teach us at least three lessons. Three, three lessons. First, it was taken from his side. From his side. Taken from his side. Okay? So woman was neither to be above or below the man. Right? Taken from his side. All right? Number two, second lesson. The rib was from under his arm. Under his, his arm. Okay? Uh, so she is to be sheltered and protected by him. Right? This is what we're learning here. And then the third thing, it was taken from near his heart. It was taken from near his heart, so she is to be loved by him. Loved by him. Isn't it wonderful what we can learn from the Bible here? So, anyway. 
So, so, so to keep, if you want to keep your love fire burning, now who wants to keep their love fire burning with their, with their spouse or their relationship they got going? And if you're, if you're not married yet, and, it, and it's something you want to learn more about, this is good for you here too, All you, even, even your young people. God has given us some very simple instructions. Now this is getting the most important part. Open up your Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Everyone knows this is the love chapter in the Bible. 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. The simple instructions God has given us here. Now what I'm going to do here, I'm going to read today from the NIV version, guys, up the, uh, in the, if, you, if, if that is possible. I apologize to throw this at you. But I kind of like the wording here in the, in the NIV uh, that, it, that it brings out here. Um, love is patient. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is kind. Now, again, I want, I want to point something out as we go through reading these. Remember, love is not a feeling. Love is a choice. Okay? Love is a choice. So, love is patient. Do we... Are we normally patient? With each other? No. This is something the Bible tells us. God is telling us here to keep the love fire burning. We have got to make the choice to be patient with each other. To be long-suffering with each other. Love is kind. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. Love is not proud. Love does not dishonor others love is not self-seeking love is not easily angered love keeps no record of wrongs love does not delight in evil but rejoices with truth love always protects love always trust love always trust it always hopes love always perseveres the love never fails. All right. Now, I asked here a couple weeks ago, and we, we took, we, 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 by having people stand up, we found out the couple that had been married longer than anybody else here was, was uh, Leon and Marion. So I'm going to ask those two, if, if we could get maybe a couple chairs, Brian, up here, I'm going to ask these two brave people to come up because they apparently know some things that we don't know yet. When you've been married that long, you've been tested. That love has been tested. We'll just put it, where would be a good place to put it at? Right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Right here be good. Yeah, right either side of me. Thank you. Great. Boy, you look at, we, he come here and we just put him right to work here. Now, would it be easier for her to be down here? Probably, yeah. Let's do that. Okay, come on down here. Come on. This is going to be, that's going to be good. Put these two on the hot seat there. Thank you. And we need a couple mics. I get this one. You know, when, you, when you've been married, how many years? 68 years. Let's give him a hand. Take your time. Okay. Okay. 68 years. You know, I'm thinking, I'm thinking the two of you can can share some, some pretty good things with us here at church today. Um, <laughs> 68 years. 68 years. Wow. For, for huh? Let me I see. know. I, some of them, yeah, I'm not even that old yet. <laughs> Let me tell you, Springtown, now you hear the rest of the story. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Now, one thing, one thing I did, now, I, I did let, let them know. I said, now, this is not a confessional. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a confessional at all here. Uh, let's just let's just learn some things about the two of you. How how did you, both of you can answer, and you decide who goes first? But how did you meet? How, how did you meet? You put your mic up there to your well, we right met close. At, uh, yeah. Enterprise Academy. Enterprise Academy. Okay. How how old were you? I was twenty. Twenty. Okay. All right. I was 14. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. 
right. Well, uh, no, what? we met at, uh, really met at the Bazine Church where we uh, used to go to church. They joined the church when she was 13 years old. And they come to the Bazine Church. And uh, that's when I first met her. Okay, all right. So yeah, you, you, were, you were around, uh, you were probably really both really young. This was even before Enterprise then. Okay, so around right. 14 when you first met. And, uh, and so apparently you must have uh, thought you, this was the right one here when you met uh, and everything. Or pretty early, or you're sure, you sure thinking about it and everything. For so, better words, and you know what? On the way to church. Up there close to you. Thank you, Sue. Anyway, on the way to church, and Rayon does this a lot of times, he takes my hand and he says, I love you. Ah. I mean, we'll be sitting in the house and, and I'll say, I love you. And he says, I love you too. Yeah, yeah. In other words, the love fire is still going. Praise God. Praise God. Right. All right. So uh, what advice can you share with us that got you through the hard times? I think that's what we... We, it's very obvious you, you met you met in church. That's a really good place to meet. Praise God. You know, I, I was looking for love in all the wrong places. Uh, <laughs> I don't know where I got that line at either. But, uh, but, but, uh, but anyway, if, uh, the best place to find the love of your life is at church. And, uh, and that, so that's, that's one take home right there for you guys and girls that are not married yet. You're looking. A good place is to look for, uh, uh, for your future, the one that will keep the love fire burning is, is at church. So, but what advice can you share with us that got through the hard times? Because, you know, 68 years, y'all have, you have went through probably financial difficulties. You went through health issues. You have went through uh, probably a lot of other things, you know, that we don't have to go in detail on. But what got you through the hard times? Well, I have I to say, <clears throat> getting through the hard times after we got married she didn't know how to cook. Oh, I wouldn't have told that. <laughs> she didn't know how to cook, but uh, we lived with uh, my parents there for a while, and my mother was a great cook. And <laughs> you mess it up, and you're you're digging a hole. <laughs> you know, I also learned. The cook over the over the period of years, and let me tell you, guys, learn to cook. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so I've I've learned something here already that that uh, if you learn to cook. Uh, women, women know this. A, a way to the man's heart is his food. <laughs> well, let me tell you. Okay. Here. After Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Come on in. Jump on in, mom. <laughs> I, I learned to be a good cook. Yeah. <laughs> she was. Yeah, I was a good cook. Yeah. Okay. What's some of the other things that you learned uh, uh, to just make it through the hard times? I mean, because you have been through some hard times, seriously. I'm well, sure we you went, have. Well, we lived on a farm in Kansas. And, uh, Keep it close. There was a bump in the, there's been some bumps in the road. Yeah. And I just go out at a chicken house, and we didn't, there was no chicken there, and prayed. There, okay. Key point. Getting through the hard times, write this down in your heart. Pray. Pray. Yes, you are. If you get married, you're going through marriages, you are going to have hard times. Prayer. Well, at night when we go to bed, I'll say, I love you. You're my hero. Ah, praise God. Praise God. Praise mm -hmm. the Lord. Every night when we go to bed, that's what we do. Okay. Praise God. Thank you. Beautiful. Anything you want to add to that? Well, for the past 12 years, I've learned how to cook. I've, <laughs> I've learned how to, how to fix the bed, uh -huh. wash oh. clothes, because okay. Marion is not capable of doing that. So, you know, it, it, it helps if you, if you know how to boil water. Amen. So, Leon, what I'm picking up on from you, one of the ways to keep the love fire going is I say I love you when I help cook. I love you when I, I love you, honey, when I help make the bed. I love you, honey, when I help you do this. 
I love you, but not by with saying it with your lips, but the way you treat you treat her. Yeah, thank you. You know, it. Uh, when I was cooking and working in the house, I always had a partner, and that was Jesus. Amen. I had Jesus by my side, and you know, it gave you, it gave me strength of. You know, I don't want to do it, but who's going to do it if you don't do it? That's right. Yeah. So, you know, you, I've always prayed to Jesus. You know, my mother, if she know, knew that I was sitting here in this church and making a confession, she would sing hallelujah. All right. I had a great mother for prayer. Amen. Amen. And I guess that's why we're here in this church. 68 years of marriage. How, how old are you, Leon? 87. 87 years old. 87. You know, the, the, I've gotten something out of this, and you have two already. Having a relationship with Jesus Christ is priority in keeping the love fire burning. Friends, you cannot love each other Keep, we can't because we're so selfish. Only by the, the love of Jesus Christ in us can we love others and put others first like I'm hearing. I've got a question for y'all that, that everybody needs to hear because one thing that happens sometimes in my marriage that I know probably happens in other marriages too, Cindy and I don't always agree on everything. How do you handle disagreements? That's a hard one. How do you do that? How do you handle those big disagreements? You know what I'm talking about, don't you, honey? <laughs> go ahead. Shake your head, go, yes. Go ahead. I, I'm, li I'm listening, and I'm listening, and Cindy's taking notes. No, we love each other. How, how yeah. do you handle the disagreements? Well... I just, I say, have it your way. <laughs> <laughs> Is he that hard? <laughs> how, how do you handle disagreements, Leon? You think about it. And then you pray about it. And you know then it's all over. Because God is... God is the answer. Okay. All right. You just told me what I need to hear, and I think that's really good advice. When you've got something that you're disagreeing on, there it is again. Pray about it. If, if you pray, if you both of you come together, genuinely say, look, just, we just want God's will to be done, honey. And we, and we pray about this. And you pray to the point that you get, it doesn't matter what you want as long as God gets what he wants. So very important. Now, another, another thing here is that I think that would be very important for, for us to know from the two of you is where the Bible teaches us to, to be patient with one, one another, to be nice to each other, uh, to not be rude, not, 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 to, not to fly off the handle, not to get, uh, be angry quickly. How do you, I mean, I can under, be, one or two times, I'm okay with it. But, if, but what about that thing that your spouse does that they just do over and over and over. Come on. Come on, Don. Over and over. <laughs> over and over and over. What about, I mean, am I, is, does that happen at your home too? Uh, oh, okay, yeah. what do you, yes. give us some help here. Oh, give us yeah. some help. What can we do? What can we do about that? About that thing that really gets on our life's nerve. Just kind of sit back and think about it. You got to think about it before, before you put the water in the kettle. <laughs> and you know, it, uh, I've sat back and thought, you know, she can't do this. So, you know, here again, I said before, there's always two people in that, in our house beside her. Yes, that's yes, God. That's right. Amen. Amen. You know, I, I love it. I did want my girls to come from a, a broken home. 
Yeah. So yeah, I prayed. I prayed many, many times. Yes. Because there's there's a bump in the road. Several times. So uh, here here's another one, and we our clock is going faster than we are. We said we weren't going to worry about the clock today because this is good stuff. I mean, th this this is this is about this is things that will help you in your relationship and help us. Uh, learn to be more like Jesus. 1 Corinthians 13, 5 says that, that love keeps no record of wrongs. Love keeps no records of, of wrong. Now, I don't know uh, if it happens, but, but it's easy for us sometimes, you know, to, to every time we get in a little pit pat with each other, we, we start digging up bones, you know, start digging up bones. And, and, uh, and, 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 and it's easy to do that, to, to get historical <laughs> instead of hysterical. Now, the Bible tells us in, in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 5, not to get hysterical, right? Not to, not to be easily angered or provoked. But then he follows up and says, and, and, and don't, don't, don't recall those. Don't, don't dig up those bones. Don't get historical about it. Don't start digging up from the past. So how do we do that? Because it's easy to do that. It's easy to keep that record. I mean, how do you forget about those things that, that bother you, that get up under your skin? How do you do that? L-O-V-E. Ah, oh, love. A choice. Leon always says that word. It's so hard to say. Yes. yes. Love. Amen. That is, that is, that is so true. Uh, Proverbs 17, 9 says, If you cover up the transgression and you forget it, you're seeking love. But if you repeat the matter over and over, it separates friends. So, so what the Bible is telling us here, don't beat each other up over the past. It won't do any good, right? It would do no good to keep digging the past up over and over and over. The Bible says, love, love has no record of your faults. That's very, very good. I, I, over and over. I like that. So, to keep your love fire burning, one thing we've learned here again is you need to be a good forgetter. Right? Mm -hmm. Forget about all those things. Those things, you know. That, because what can happen over a period of time, if you focus on those things, they will get bigger and bigger and bigger. Right? But if, if you focus on the problem of your spouse, if you just focus in on that, it's getting quiet now. If you focus in on that, what's going to happen? It's going to annoy you more and more and more and more. But if you focus instead on Jesus, instead of that problem, it's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller till you'll be like Leon, and all you'll see in here is love. It won't bother, bother you a bit. Okay, the last, last one here that I have, and then I'm going to ask you a, a very important question, is, is it, it says that love... Always trust. Love always trust. Now, of course, this is talking about, you know, of course, we need to trust each other that, that we're being faithful to one another, you know, not having an affair. But, but I want you to know, friends, it goes, and that's where I want to go at today here with it. It goes a lot deeper than that. It goes a lot deeper than that. It's about like, like trusting your spouse. I believe in her. I trust in her. I, I know that I can depend on her or him. So, any comments on, on that? Yes. Uh, when we lived in Clovis, New Mexico, and had the car dealership, every morning I would tell her before I left the house I loved her. Yes. Because I thought maybe somebody might come by and tell her that. No. <laughs> yeah. It, it's good to trust each other, Leon. But even more than that, you know, to trust. Y'all were living in Kansas, right? Uh -huh. And then you moved to New Mexico. Mm -hmm. right. So when you, told, when you told her, look, honey, we're going we're gonna to move to New Mexico. And we're going we're gonna to start a car dealership. She had to have trust in you. She had to believe in you. Right? When, uh, when, when she made the comment, she's moving here. There had to be a certain trust level that she depended on you. 
that she knew that you were making good choices. When we trust each other, when we believe in each other, it builds us up. It builds us up. It builds our confidence level. It, it builds us up as, as human beings. I have more confidence in myself. Uh, I, I, I take myself, for example, uh, when, with Cindy and I. When, imagine when, when uh, I told Cindy, I said, Cindy, um, I believe God is calling me to be a pastor and, and calling me in the ministry. We had a farm, and, and as all of you know, and, and I provided a big portion of our income. And, but I'm saying, honey, I'm going to be a pastor, and I'm going to do it for free. I'm just going to start doing this because I, the rest of my life I want to give to God, and He'll provide. And in the meantime, you're going to have to make our, our, our living. Well, you know. Now, come on, Stacy. Uh, she had to believe in me. She had to trust in me. There, that, that, if, but if she said, no way, no, I can't see that. If she didn't believe in me, we, we would not be here today. We would not be here today. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead and say what you was going to so share. What was I going to say? Well, when Leon goes to Asylum Springs or leaves, I'm always so happy when he comes back home. And I can see him. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Leon, let me ask, let me ask one last question to, to you and Marion. Uh, what is the most important advice that you can give us to keep our love fire burning. The most important advice that you could give these people, they need to hear this. What's the most important advice that you could give? And I'd like an answer for both of y'all here. If we, this would be your kind of last question. I'd say have devotion in the morning and Praise God. have God in your life throughout the day. Amen. And when you have, when you have God in your life, Throughout the day, you also have love in the house. Amen. Amen. Leon, that is the very best, most 100% answer that you have could gave right there. Praise God. Mary, any, anything? Well, I don't know. I'm 89. I don't know why the Lord is letting me live this long. Maybe to give this testimony right now. We love you. 89. And I just... After being married this long, I, I still love him. And when he's gone, he comes home. I'm so glad to see him back home. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I hope everybody got that one. Because the most important thing to keep a love fire burning is, is to keep Jesus in the middle of your relationship. In every relationship, there needs to be you and your spouse in Jesus. And you keep him in the center. You know, uh, when I, if you love someone, you're going to spend time with them. You're going to spend time with them. And if, you know, I tell Cindy and I are married, and, and, I, and, and if I just come by and seen her about once a month, and I told her, I love you, baby, they, nobody, I'm not putting anybody above you. You are top notch in my heart, and I only come by and seen her once a month, what would she tell me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, time. They spend time with each other, and they spend time with Jesus together. So thank you all very much. Sure. Thank you very much. Anything else you want to say? No. Because everything you've said is good. <laughs> everything you've said is good. Okay, thank, thank you all. You. God bless you. God bless you. So here we are. Has, has everybody enjoyed this? Is this something that you could care home? You know, do you want to keep the love fire burning? Something you want to keep going? When you have all these things, when you have all these things we've talked about are, are better said. And this is your take home right here. This is a take home. When, when, you, when you choose to do all these things. Now, again, these things are a command from God. Right? Because He loves us. Because He knows what's best for us. He said, if you choose, if you choose, if you make the choice to be patient with each other, if you make the choice to be long-suffering with each other, if you make the choice to be kind to each other, make that choice. 
Make, if you make that choice. Uh, not. That's how we communicate with each other. <laughs> See? If, we, if you make that choice to do that, if you make the choice not to be prideful, if you make the choice not to be selfish, if you make the choice uh, to not, not, to, not to fly off the handle, not to, not to get angry. Guys, uh, that's, that's something oh, we, always blame it, we always blame it on somebody, you know, in our family line. You know, that's just because I'm a, that's the Gavin coming out in me or, or whatever. No, no, you've got a choice. You can choose not to be angry. You know, not to anger quickly. You can choose not to do You can purpose in your heart to forget all those things and don't add them up. Don't dig up the bones. Don't become historical. If, when you, every time you get in an argument, make a choice not to do that. Not to do that. Now, this is the Bible telling us this. This is not marriage counseling. This is, this is the, the Word of God here telling us to do that. And when you choose to believe in your spouse, to trust in your spouse, I trust you, I believe in you, when you choose to do these things, when you, and, and, and when you choose to have hope, don't look, don't, do not get in the habit of looking on the negative side of everything. Choose to have hope. Choose to have hope. And, and no matter what, love never fails. Don't ever, ever, ever give up on each other. Just don't do it. Just don't ever give up on each other. And, when, and the Bible says when you, do, when you choose to do all these things, when you choose to do all these things, your love fire will keep burning. Praise God. Praise God. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for, for the instruction you've given us in your word on how we can keep the love fire burning. Please, through your Holy Spirit, Lord, plant these in our heart and give us the power and the strength to choose to do them in our relationships. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on up, Greg. You know, Greg traveled here all the way from, from Tennessee, and, and he, this is his ministry. This is his ministry. So I'm just praying maybe we'll have something uh, out, out here in the back that if anybody wanted to give a love offering to you, that they're welcome to do that. Will you have a place set up, any place in particular? I, I don't. Or, or do you want us to put a hat back there? Thank you. Okay. We can, we can get a hat back there. Stacy, could you get us a hat? A okay, big Stacey's hat. on Big it. hat. Big hat, he said. Big hat. Yeah. Big tank. Okay, God bless y'all. I've got a short stack of CDs. Last time I was here, I think most everyone got one, but if there's anyone here this morning that did not get one, I've got a stack over here at this little table with Mr. Bob. Uh, please make sure to come get one as, as our gift, okay? Uh, this is a song that the Oak Ridge Boys were kind enough to sing with me on, a, on and I think that song is on the CD. Uh, I couldn't get them here this morning to help me. Uh, Mine eyes, though heavy, will not close My body begs for rest When I leave life's table I still feel consumed by emptiness Imprisoned in my easy chair My mouth is parched and dry In this desperate hour I see the light From the corner of my tear-filled eye When there's dust on the Bible With its pages unturned As I read 
I feel my misery flee To my doubts I give a lie Each word breaks the heart of Satan's hand But I thank God that I realize When there's dust on the Bible Precious Bible With its page you know, oom pa pa oom pa With its pages unturned it's so simple and yet I soon forget what I've made, what I've learned. That word when read, it's water and bread. It's a found for the lambs of the fold. When there's dust on the Bible, there's a storm raging in my soul. Okay. Tell me. okay, all right, thank you. <laughs> thank you all, all for being a part of this. Let's, um, let's really take this seriously. Prayer, when a family prays together, they stay together. Take this home with you. And maybe go through 1 Corinthians 13 and just pray about this and say, am I doing this in my relationship that I have? Uh, and, and, and allow God to give you the power to do it. Now today, uh, before our closing prayer, we are going to have a fellowship meal together. And so everyone is invited. I hope you, you have, we've had some spiritual food and we're going to have some physical food with each other. So I hope everybody can stick around. I'm going to go ahead and right now and have a closing prayer and I'm going to ask God's blessing on the food. I guess we can do that too, can't we? All right. Father in heaven, we thank you for the delicious spiritual food that you have fed us today on how we can, can be strong families for you, Lord, that our marriages can grow and our love fire can keep burning. We pray for your Holy Spirit and the aid of angels to help us do that. Now we thank you for this physical food that we're going to have here in a little bit. We pray that it can be used to nourish and strengthen our body so that we can tell the whole world how good you are and how much you love us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all. Okay, bye-bye.